Okay, I am on another redo of a shower that was never built. And I'm going to go through a lot of explanation on this for specific reasons. A lot of people tell me, mm, a few people tell me <laughs> that I'm negative. They don't like my hand in the camera either. Well, too bad. Don't watch my videos. I don't know what to tell you. I put my hand. I'm half Italian. I got to put my hand in there. Um, so the reason that I'm negative is I go on these redos. And fortunately, they kind of stopped this before it got too far. Um, but unfortunately they kind of got ripped off and so the reason going back 10 years that I do videos like this is a forewarning to people had this woman watched some of my videos prior to these people coming in and mucking everything up she would have saved herself thousands of dollars and I wouldn't be here doing this video so specifically my videos are heads up videos if you will kind of like know what you know before yeah okay so from the very start, what this was is a, this was, it doesn't look like it now because they took the wall way up to the ceiling, but, uh, and I'm usually taking these down, you know, a knee wall. <clears throat> so this kind of started out as a knee wall, but it was over here. So this used to be on this end, um, what was it, a shower and a tub. Yeah, it was a garden tub. So the garden tub came five foot over, which is about, yeah, Right about here, the garden tub came up to here, and I don't know if it was a deck type of tub or for freestanding or what it was, but there was a garden tub here. And then right between where the drain is, um, even with that wall, because they never moved the drain, was a, what the customer calls a telephone booth shower. So it was very small, one of those fiberglass type stand-up showers. Um, so there was a shower, a small shower here and a tub which they had no use for. So she had the bright idea, which is wonderful, to take the tub out, take the shower out and make this huge shower. And then my take on it is that there's going to be shelves up in here for storage and stuff like that since there's a very small bathroom, so-called master bath, but you know, it's still very small. So they got through um, a company, I believe it was Bath Fitters. Uh, so they are relatively major company here in uh, Metro Atlanta and they came in and they tore so they did everything here but the tile Right, so they built this wall up because it even got painted it well really bad job um, They built this wall up. They built this bench. They built this niche. They built they did all this prep and I'm gonna go through kind of succinctly there's a lot of problems here and sometimes there are so many issues that I, I can't wrap my brain I can't the way I want to succinctly because I get dumbfounded by a lot of the mistakes that are made when they did the curb not only <laughs> not only did they do the top piece um, well okay so sometimes people come up with the side pieces first and then they put the top piece in here um, which makes no sense to me at all, but they didn't even make these side pieces flush with the top piece, right? It would make more sense to have these coming up and then this overlap both of those, which is the way I do it. And we have backer board here, we have cement board, which is okay. They put tape in here, which is okay. You know, they waterproofed everything, but one of the reasons I don't like tape, you really have to press in that tape into the corner in order for, yeah, it wants to bend and then you have all these little holes that you have to go over this like three times to really get in the holes of this tape. Whereas if you don't use tape, it doesn't really matter. See, there's holes in here too. Um, and so when I just mud this corner rather than put tape on it, then my waterproofing wraps around all the mudded area. And the waterproofing is a crack preventer, same as tape would be. It's redundant to use both, whatever. Um, see all these holes? You really have to go over it well to cover those holes. So that's another another reason why I don't like it necessarily. So, of course, what they should have done is screeded out some thin set across that tape, and they didn't do that either. Um, they built the bench way too high. I didn't measure it yet, but um, <laughs> it's way too high. This bench should come down to about maybe 18 inches, right? And 17, 18 inches would be the appropriate height, and this is probably pushing ooh, past, well, I can find out real quick. I think. Is there a piece of tile? Nope, that's glued down. They didn't do an outstanding job um, on the floor tile. And I'm not gonna get into that. It's, uh, there's some lippage going on. So this is a 24, <laughs> 24, 
24 inch tile and oh look how crooked it is well that's because the floor is slanted uh, yeah so got another extra four inches so um yeah figure 24 25 26 and 7 27 inch tall bench which is crazy but i'm going to take that out um it was built it was built under the pan sorry on top of the pan um, so the two are kind of married, the bench and the pan is married, and I don't do that. My bench is a separate entity altogether. So I build the bench, and then all my scabbing goes up on the bench, 2 by 4s and all that stuff. Same as on the walls, and then that's a separate entity. So that if this fails, you're not having to take out the bench. If the bench fails, you're not having to take out the shower pan. So that's specifically why I separate those two. Small potatoes, but you know, in the scheme of things, it matters. Really hacked up this wall board really, really bad. Yes, mud could take up the difference, but why? I mean, they're trying to, that's not even a good score and snap. You know, that should have been cut with a, a saw outside and then transition the sheetrock. <sighs> okay, so um, another thing too, I'm just gonna skip around. Um, a lot of people, are fixated, they screwed this into the wall, which is totally unnecessary, but they're fixated on putting the trim on first. Well, everybody knows that that trim matches up almost perfect with the tile, right? But all your thin set behind it, which they didn't use enough, which is why they have lippage going on, all your thin set behind it is gonna bump this out, right? That's why I put in my trim after the fact, and they painted over that. Whoever painted that really messed that up because that was a nice oil rub bronze at one point. But anyway, I don't think they did that. Maybe it was a homeowner. Either which way, um, look at the cuts. So the tile is a separate thing. I don't want to get into that quite yet. Um, the shower pan, I don't know why there is this going on. I don't know why. Maybe there was a crack in the shower pan that happened, I'm not sure. Um, the shower pan was set kind of a hodgepodge, you can tell, look at that, thin set, um, kind of a hodgepodge. You know what, I don't have to say anything. All I have to do is just pan my camera. <laughs> look at that hump. Oop, I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, just pan my camera around and kind of have a look-see at everything. God, if there was ever 3D filming. It will just amaze you at some of these simple mistakes. Um, the least of which is, you know, your bearing, your, uh, oh God, yeah. So the floor has a lot of issues. It's got humps, it's got th things going on. I don't know how they made the drain happen. I'll find out when I tear this out. Um, that bothers me only slightly, that the screws aren't lined up. However, this is pretty funny. I'm glad I opened this. There's no screws, this is a snap-in cap. So this is a wrong cap for the drain to begin with. Um, in fact, that's an offset drain. Very odd. Yeah, this is a concrete slab. So once I get all this out, inevitably I'm gonna have to go into the concrete and kind of reconfigure whatever muck up thing that they did. Um, I just noticed this crack, so more than likely that's why this Aqua Defense got put here because this pan started cracking, which there's no reason for. Um, they should have done their floor tile first before they set their wall tile. As I mentioned, there's a hump over there, there's dips going on over here. They just kind of slapped it together. So there's a lot, a lot of issues. Then we get up to the shower valve area and look how they wrap. So this is a, um, I forgot the brand name, but they claim they got it at Home Depot. And it has stops on it, which I love. But how do you access the stops? I can barely access this hot side, and I can't access the right side at all, period. Like, and then they were gonna, I guess, tile around that so that you could never turn that off, which, you know, is kind of crazy. But the other crazy thing is, look how much room you have. By the time you put on your plate, yeah, you're almost to the outer edge. That plate should be somewhere around this area. So they, they threw the mud guard away. In fact, the homeowner said that they took the whole box with them, instructions, mud guard, all that stuff. All she was left with is a plate and a handle. That's it. 
So now I got to go run down some screws. Once I get this torn out, I'll be able to kind of reconfigure that and you know bump it back out. Um, but they also used um, what did they use? I think they used a plastic pipe in here when they plumbed this in. Yeah. So CPVC got used. I don't like it, but it's there already, so I'll deal with it. Um, the prep is what this company came in and did. Uh, yeah. So um, I don't know. Look at this. So they got a half inch um, elbow over here, uh, drop L, and then they put this on top of it. I don't know why they would have done that. Um, so that's about all I can say. This is a really poorly done prep job for a shower. <clears throat> but then the homeowner had um, somebody that said they could do tile and they tried their hand at it and they kind of failed. Well, they failed a lot. So the fatal mistake they made is they used the spacers, which, you know, of and themselves are okay if you're doing a straight pattern, straight pattern and meaning that you're not offset in half. Um, they should have used leveling clips because every single one of these intersections has lippage, every single one, every single one. Plus, look how far off that is. I'm not gonna really bash this guy because he's not a title setter. He was trying to do the homeowner a favor, you know, said she lost so much money on this job. Um, so I'm not gonna bash him too bad. It's just not a, it's not a good tile job at all. All right, I got a bunch of the demo done already. I'm gonna turn this fan on. All this noise, you'll never hear me. I guess that's the bad thing about GoPro is that um, the voice volume isn't that good. I'm gonna try and talk as close as I can. So I got all this out in a couple hours. Well, almost all of it. I still have that top part to take out. Um, so just as I suspected, the shower pan went all the way up to here. And then I wish I could show it to you. It was really, from the outside, it looked okay. It looked like it was almost waterproof, except for those holes that I showed you. But the inside, there was nothing going on. They had some shower pan liner that started at the bottom of the um, bench and it went up and it wrapped the top of the bench. But that's all that was happening, right? There's no shower pan liner in here. So they were relying 100% on Aqua Defense to be their shower pan liner, well, their water barrier, as it were. And so they used quite a bit of it. There was no scabbing, obviously, because there's no pan liner that was used. Um, they embedded their wall board literally into the pan, which if they had had a problem, it would have rotted all that wood and rotted the curb and everything else. So there was a there's a lot of stuff going on. In fact, there was so many mess ups going on, including this wall that they built when they took out the niche. The niche was literally not even, so it had uh, Dura Rock. It's like they built the niche and then stuck it in there and only used these two by fours to hold it because, you know, it's clearly not going to the bottom. So there's no one two by four in this wall that goes top to bottom because they split the whole wall in half. Mm, which is okay, it's not load bearing, but it's a really funky way to build a wall. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, and I didn't, and again, I didn't go over everything, it's not necessary. I just wanted to kind of look at, look at it. So the mortar, now again, I haven't got down to the concrete slab, so I don't know how mucked up that is, but the mortar is maybe an inch, inch and a quarter there, and then when we get to this back end, hold on a second, when we get to this back end, it's about two inches over here. So it's a it's it's kind of a hodgepodge of different, and then I can tell that the mortar bed um, is higher over there than it is over there. It kind of slopes down to that back corner. Um, so that drain that still bothers me uh, slightly. So it's um, it's it's a it's a pretty bad job, you know, like with with all. The stuff that's on the internet nowadays, there's no reason to do this this poorly of a job that they've done. Um, but I'm going to take it all out now. It's just, it's, there, there, I don't think there's anything really here that was, that I could say, wow, he did okay. I don't think there is. I think the whole thing, the only thing he did okay on, he used, he used so many screws. Well, I took most of them out. I mean, there's a screw after screw. Like, he didn't want it to go anywhere. Every five inches, there seems to be a screw. So I had to deal with that, too, pulling all this wall board out. And it's a mess. If ever anyone's ever tried to take out Dura Rock, it just crumbles. You know, it disadheres from the mesh, and 
yeah it's a lot of a lot of crumbling work that, <laughs> that i've had to do to get this out but it's gone now and that's all i wanted to show you is that you know no shower pan liner bothers me even if i'm going to red guard the surface and make sure no water gets into anything the backup is my shower pan liner and there should have been a backup here so that's all i got to say about that i had to come back one more time because um sometimes when i get into shower rebuilds and i'm tearing one apart i get into something i've never seen before never ever seen this before and i don't even think i have to say anything like I was talking about before, all I have to do is just pan around, just pan around my camera. And yes, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, yes, that's exactly what happened. This guy, this is where the tub was, this garden tub that used to be here. Um, very typical of it, of the drain sitting very close uh, to the exterior wall. And so with a tub situation, Almost always, 99.999%, they're going to build a box. So they do that on a tub always, and they do that usually on a fiberglass shower. Fiberglass shower will also have fiberglass pan, as it were, will have a box uh, built into the foundation when they pour the concrete. So when we come back to do a shower, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, <laughs> when we come back to do a shower, say this was a shower, we would transition to our two inch at a certain point, bring up our drain and then we would we would put the backfill if there's shale or something like that that you took out you would put the shale back and then you would get a bag of uh, 60 pound concrete and fill that in but they didn't so they decided to take all the tile that was original shower and just bury all of their tile into there almost all the way to the top so when they poured their mortar bed when they poured their mortar bed the mortar just got a little layer you know two inches of mortar on top of that there's no there's no concrete here at all it's all mortar and, and it's just craziness that somebody would have um, I don't even have a descriptive word for for the nonsense and laziness that you would have to do to do something like this and it's annoying because it's causing me more work the only good thing is they capped off the drain I'm surprised they did that now that takes us over to the shower the shower was originally we already know that it was originally this although it could be argued that this was a plastic shower pan which is why we have this cutout it could also be argued that they wanted to transition to a two inch drain so they proactively cut out a square um sort of but it's kind of a raggedy square so i doubt it was original construction However, a couple of problems here. One, same issue happened here as I just showed you. They have mortar that literally is sitting on top of, guess what? A bunch of more tile. So, as much as I did not want to get into digging this out, I'm going to have to dig this out because I can't go back the way it was for a couple of reasons. Not just because I'm feeling kind of lazy and I want to do my shower pan on top of this. That's not, that's not even an issue. The bigger issue is... This is a wrong drain completely. When I first came in here, I told you about how this drain cap is not, this is a snap-in drain cap, but yet you have screws for, you know, your left and your right. It's the wrong drain cap, but it's also the wrong drain. This drain is for a shower pan that you would have, um, you know what? I know what happened. I bet if I asked a homeowner, they may have had tile on the walls, but they had a fiberglass shower pan because that's what that is that's what that drain is for you see that gasket so that gasket keeps the water out you have a gasket underneath this thing should screw out um, and it screws into the top of one of those plastic pans and the gasket keeps the water out um, usually plumbers putty or caulking on the top or whatever um, the gasket goes at the bottom so it's a completely the wrong drain I cannot retrofit a shower in here with that kind of drain because it's not a three-piece there's no way i can put a liner on here so yeah sometimes when you think you've seen it all i'm not going to come back on camera to show you that because i already know for a fact that they did it in this hole they did it in that hole as well and so i'm stuck i gotta get some concrete and fill both of those in and that 
precludes me from moving along. And of course there's no scabbing because they didn't do a liner. So yeah, it's unfortunate that so many mistakes are made in, um, in this business and then the homeowner ultimately pays for it one way or the other. And here is the final product. I like it a lot. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of hiccups that happened along the way, but from what it was to what it is now, turned out very nice. You know, the matching granite. You know what? These were remnants that she actually got. So the company came in, did their measurement prior to, right? So I had to build my bench according to this. Although it was longer, I cut off what I didn't need. The curb is six inches, which they almost always are. So I had bumped out my wall board, I think on the inside, another half inch so that my finished product would be flush, which I'm not always able to do. Normally curbs are five and a half and we know the curb tops are six, so I made it happen. Um, she didn't get a matching drain cap from OT yet, but she can get, if worst case scenario, she can get some good quality spray paint to match up with this uh, oil bronze. Um, stuff that she has. So the niche isn't center, but it's not center because there were two two by fours, but there's another wall behind here going that direction. I didn't want to cut into those, so we just kind of made it off center, which worked out. Um, I came back, I think it's been two weeks since I've been here, so I had to come back and put these um, grab bars in, that one and that one. Um, yeah, so the fixture is in, nicely done with the little wand sprayer and all that stuff and um yeah looking 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 really really good from what it was to what it is now um again drain's not center but if you watch the previous and you'll know that concrete slab and she didn't want to go in yeah a lot of issues you can if you didn't watch the beginning then you'll see what was going on but um, turned out very nice from what it was, from this high bench that used to be here that was non-functional to that niche that was back here that shouldn't have been back there to all this scabbing of the wood that was all messed up. And yeah, there were a lot of issues. Even the tile that was, <laughs> that was inside of that drain area and the wrong drain, by the way. So there was a lot of issues that I had to kind of overcome on this one but it turned out very nice and you know a lot better than what it would have been if the guy had continued on his work um, not that I'm the best out there but yeah um, I don't do scab type of work like you saw and then we have the niche nicely trimmed out and flush all the way around with no chipping on the tile and she likes it and I like it and I'm out on to the next job Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.